In Homer, we tell stories of falling in love with our cosmic Hamlet, as Homer is known, at this Baycrest Overlook, the gateway to Homer. Homer's view, glacier-studded mountains and world-renowned Kachemak Bay provide a spectacular setting. Kachemak Bay is a place of quiet beauty where visitors can enjoy seeing a wide variety of wildlife. Its many protected areas provide migratory birds safe foraging, nesting, and resting areas during spring, summer, and fall. Because of the bay's rich resources, a large diversity of migratory birds like sandhill cranes and shorebirds return year after year. For many Homer residents, the arrival of sandhill cranes in April heralds the start of spring renewing our annual love affair with our feathered friends. These avian ambassadors bring us together as a community, instilling a source of pride and purpose through sharing experiences living with them and creating crane art. Part of the Western Hemisphere Shorebird Reserve Network, one of its many special designations, the Beluga Slough Wetlands is easily accessed from the Islands and Ocean Visitor Center Boardwalk or Bishop's Beach. Birder reports to eBird have recorded over 30 species of waterfowl, like pintails and these white-fronted geese, and at least 30 or more species of shorebirds, and a wide variety of over 60 species of songbirds and other terrestrial birds using the rich habitat in Beluga Slough and along Bishop's Beach. During the Kachemak Bay Shorebird Festival, excited birders thronged the boardwalk along Beluga Slough. Three pairs of nesting sandhill cranes also share this productive area. Mating cranes and baby cranes, called colts, are often easily visible adjacent to the boardwalk. They live under the sharp, watchful eyes of bald eagles nesting on opposite sides of the slough. Visitors are often rewarded with close observations of developing colts. Within 60 to 70 days after hatching, they will grow from tiny fuzzballs on stilts to full size when they are finally able to fly. I think they are, they are very, very important to the local economy because in the process of making this film, I have been talking to a lot of people who are artists as well as people who run B&Bs and other businesses as well as people who have cranes living in their yards. And 201, every one of them says that they feel the cranes bring visitors to Homer because they are such magnificent birds and they are able to be seen pretty easily within the community. You can go down to the Bishop's Beach boardwalk area that goes up to the Islands and Ocean Visitor Center. And each summer for the past few years, there have been sandhill cranes nesting in that slough cranes add a lot to the community. And you can see around the community that there's a lot of people that are using them for logos in their businesses. They're using them uh, on the sides of their buildings. They're using them on cards. There's, there's artists who paint them, fo photograph them. And it's actually pretty amazing. And it's just exploded in the last few years. They've taken to nesting with, within neighborhoods and it seems like they, they choose people to live with. 
I don't know how they do it, but somehow or another they figure out places where it's safe and where there are, there are people who are mm -hmm. crane friendly, so to speak. And I've found this over and over in talking to the people in the Homer community who have cranes living in their yards or near their yards. And one of the things that they get out of it is that when there's dangers, whether it's a bear or a dog or an eagle, they found that if they move close to the humans, they get some added protection by having done so. And the, I've had a number of people tell me that there's been instances where they've saved their cranes from being taken by a predator. And I know that's... Love of cranes is infused throughout Homer, exemplified in the many forms of artwork and in the stories of residents who live with the Sandhill cranes. Mavis Muller does her crane art in a big, impermanent way in her field at Crane Haven, creating giant sandhill cranes using natural materials, mainly wild grass, alder, and nettles. For her, art is a tool to advocate for and give voice to the natural world. Her art is cyclical, like the seasons. As she says, it is a way to share their natural beauty, dignified and stately ways of being, and transforming qualities. It is also her way to advocate for the cranes and their habitat. The Homer Public Library is the flagship of crane art inside and out. Moose Run Metalsmith's cranes adorned the doors, and Lisa Krebs made the bike racks. Inside the library's comfortable reading area, Tamara Schmidt's stately alder and metal cranes cruise over patrons in a silent, perpetual glide, moving ever so slightly in the building's air currents. I like cranes because th they lived in Nebraska nine million years ago and it's fun to see a bird that lived a long time ago. I like cranes because they're, they're like the biggest they're like the biggest bird here and they can still fly. The coolest thing about cranes is that they eat things that be that do stuff bad to us. Like what? Leeches. Um, we see the. them in Homer by two sisters at the boardwalk, and that's where we saw the chicks. Oh, you saw chicks down there. The little, we just saw little tiny, like a ball, like a brown ball just walking around. A brown ball of fluff? Yeah. <laughs> yep. They were with their parents. The two dad friends. and the mom each had a chick with them. The city of Homer selected Joshua Nordstrom's dancing cranes to grace the sides of a public restroom on Pioneer Avenue. I guess we could call it the crane throne room. Um, we were, we're Moose Run Metalsmiths. Um, we're a husband and wife team of metal artisans. Um, we do lots of things with metal um, and we love to incorporate nature into it and cranes of course is one of our most favorite topics and we've done everything from signage to amazing garden gates of dancing cranes in a in a bronze grass field um, it's just your imagination can run wild and again when you can bring something that you love so much into the focus of the artwork, it's, 
it's a win-win. The Cranes have been living here ever since we moved onto the property 15 years ago, and we had one pair that nested here for 10 whole years uh, before the male crane was killed by an eagle. And now we've had new cranes family move in, and we have a successful colt this year, and who's just in flight training at the moment, and isn't that fun to watch? During the Kachemak Bay Shorebird Festival one year, the Homer Family Theater dressed its windows with sandhill cranes. People just love the cranes and I think they're a drawing factor uh, for the tourists as well. And I, I'm surprised about the nesting area for the pair that is here because I would think they would choose a more secluded area. And this pair is within like 20 feet of the street out in the open and uh, they are not intimidated at all by what traffic we have or the animals in the area. This is from a photograph taken in the yard and I made it for the shorebird festival. The quilters had a challenge on birds and I thought what better one to do uh, than to do the cranes from my backyard. I like photographing cranes for a couple of reasons. First, they're such an utterly wild creature with their migration, their incredibly long migrations, at least the ones that come to Alaska. They seem to interact with people reasonably well. We get to get up close and personal with them, and you can observe the personalities of the individual birds if you're lucky enough to be near them. And you can watch them interact with each other. You, you start to understand the, the social structures that they have. Uh, crane art is in subdivisions, on mailboxes, buildings, many unexpected places, even in restaurants. B&Bs, and on everyday useful things. Um, I take photographs of our neighborhood cranes and um, wander around the neighborhood taking pictures and then what I do is I take a clear glass and put the photograph underneath the clear glass and then I use glass powders to take the image from the photograph onto the glass um, and that's, that's basically my process as well as using the kiln of course um, for firing once or twice or more times. The, the cranes um, are really important to, to most Homer people and especially to Homer artists who love to make images of them in their art. And I think it speaks to the really deep concern that most Homer people have for our gorgeous natural environment here and our wish to preserve the wild, the wildness of the environment, every aspect of it. Cranes seem to have become a symbol to me of, of the important aspects of my art, which is partly educational, trying to help people understand why we need to protect the cranes, which is because they're an exquisite creature. Um, many of different, of different crane species are disappearing across the world. And we're fortunate enough to have a fairly decent population of sandhill cranes in this country, uh, a rather small population here in Homer. 
and mm -hmm. and um, we need to protect them. Um, and I enjoy watching the way they interact with each other. Uh, recently, I was watching three cranes, maybe last year's family, uh, on one of the yards in the neighborhood, and they were doing these amazing dances and uh, the bows and the uh, spreading of the wings. In fact, I think I have a couple of new glass pieces <laughs> ready to make from my photographs of the, their behaviors. Uh, so they're fascinating to watch if you have patience and uh, you know how to be still and quiet. I think that's another aspect too, is that um, I really appreciate stillness because I think in the stillness I find the great mystery of, of life. And they help me to find that stillness that, um, that is part of my spiritual life. Um, so, so they're somehow connected to my spiritual life as well as my artistic life. Locally crafted wooden cranes appear every spring and can be found all over town along with commercial varieties. Uh, the cranes behind me are made by Cindy Shake, and she's an artist in Anchorage. And she had a show at a, a gallery up there about seven or eight years ago, and I saw these and I was immediately attracted to them. We've got cranes uh, here in Homer and in our neighborhood. We have a pair of cranes that come back to this same neighborhood every year and nest. And once we installed our uh, metal cranes, they have spent much more time uh, on our yard, in our yard, and in the yards of our neighbors on either side of us uh, who have also added cranes and crane statues and uh, it, the live cranes seem to feel safer uh, with the metal cranes uh, around them. And From ceramic tiles to jewelry To watercolors, artists present us with a wide variety of crane art to enjoy. That have the cranes here feels like a little bit of a, a responsibility. You know, we, we hear the noise and we're glad to have the cranes here, but um, when, when they aren't here, then you don't you don't worry as much. It's like having your kids at college. You know, when your kids at college, you don't, you know, you don't worry about them like you do when they're here. And so when we have a crane and they have chicks, then you're always checking on them. You're always um, seeing how they're doing. Well, we have a very brave daddy. We had a very brave daddy, and there's a eagle's nest down <clears throat> down the the beach. And this eagle was constantly dive bombing them, and they'd be sitting on the nest, and they'd both have to get up. And it was happening a lot. So one day, the eagle flew over and kind of dive bombed the male or female that was on the nest, and and then it went and sat on on the beach on the mud flats. And so the male just got up and started walking towards the the eagle, and. The eagle stayed there, and the male kind of pretended to be eating a little bit, but he made real good progress towards that eagle. And then, um, and then the eagle started, you know, picking up one foot, and picking up the other foot, and a little, looking a little anxious. And then, at the last minute, the crane put both wings back and just went full force with his beak. And whack! He just whacked him, and the eagle flew away and didn't bother him too much for a little bit. And then, a few days later. The eagle was gathering grass for his nest. And the minute he landed, that male crane went over, started going towards him, and the eagle started getting nervous, and the crane started walking faster, and then they, he went after him, and the eagle rose up, and the crane rose up, and walloped him again, and they, he, the eagle never went near him again, not 
once. Mm. And we saw this happen two times. It was very cool. So we, I call them Brave Daddy. And it's nice that we can have cranes there so close to everything and so accessible that, you know, people can see them. And, you know, I'm, we feel very blessed that we have the cranes, you know, nests often near it or right on our property. We can see it right from our upstairs. And uh, many of our birding colleagues here are envious that we can see this right from our house. Visit the Homer Farmer's Market, the Islands and Ocean Visitor Center, local art shops, or other public places to see what is new in local crane art. I care about cranes because I just love birds. I love them. They are so majestic and so beautiful. They migrate so far and that they are able to come back and find the place that they were at the year before. It's amazing to me that they keep finding my house. <laughs> I have had nesting cranes, I think approximately nine to 10 years. The threats that my cranes have to face is eagles. There, we had some nesting eagles one block away. They would fly over my house and land in the trees across the street. And it, they looked like they were dive bombing, you know, the cranes. We need to become more aware of the cranes. We need to be aware if you have them in your yard or in your neighborhood, watch, make sure that people keep their dogs leashed, you know, just really keep an eye out for them. Because after all, they're here a very short time, just a few months. We need to preserve them. They are a beautiful bird. And I think the community should be more aware of what is happening to them. I just love the cranes. I would be so disappointed if Fred and Lucille didn't come every year. <laughs> 2008 Kachemak Crane Watch, a community-wide program that monitors Homer's cranes, hired Dr. Gary Ivey, a research associate for the International Crane Foundation, to ban some of Homer's sandhill cranes. Tracking sandhill cranes provides valuable information on their nesting, foraging, and roosting habitats, so these areas can be protected and better managed as communities make development choices in the Sacramento Valley Wintering Grounds and Kachemak Bay Summering Area. Um, I think it was seven or eight years, six, seven years ago that um, C03 came here the first time, and she had been um, attacked by an eagle and I kind of think that's why they changed to nesting here on this property that I think they had been nesting across the road about a um, half mile away for a while. She was had the transmitter on her at the time and they were able to find her here and that was the first year that we saw her. We'd never seen them before and they had one colt that year. I think that was the only year they've had one colt. After that, she's always had two. The best part of ha having them here is when they bring their babies in and watching them raise their young, and they are such good parents. Um, humans could take some lessons from them. The cranes are important just like everything else is. It's just one more aspect of life in Homer, and, and every year we, now we know what to expect when I see one crane, I know that the other one is setting on the nest. I know to expect in 28 days uh, little fluffy babies. And um, I know when they start squawking that they've hatched the babies. And you know, it's just part of our life. And it's just, you know, we have a farm here and have, I'm hatching ducks and chickens and have a calf. And it's more babies that we enjoy having in the spring. Don Henry, a Homer metal artist, uses found kitchen utensils to create unusual sculptures of birds like these sandhill cranes. Uh, 
Out East End Road, just before Wasabi's, you will find the colorful Golden Trailer Cranes by artist Dale Belmonte. I bought this property about 20 years ago and it was all forested at that time. And then um, the beetle epidemic hit about four years after I bought this property and uh, trees started dying and in 2003 I logged it off and got rid of all the trees. The sandhill cranes showed up. You know, I was raised in Minnesota and I was near migratory bird paths and watched the geese and all the birds migrate and I first came to Alaska and it was in the fall. And all of a sudden I saw these crazy birds making all this noise and they were a random acts of migration, I guess you'd call it. You know, they would be going one direction and they'd all turn around and they'd go the other direction. I asked somebody, what are these crazy birds? And someone told me sandhill cranes and then they just, over 30 years, just became part of your life as you watched them as they migrated, you know, through the area. I've had cranes in the yard every year for probably the last 10 years now since then and I believe at least eight years and I'd really have to check. They've been nesting here now and pretty much successful just about every year but one year I think we didn't raise cranes and lots of years, two colts at a time. The thing I love about the cranes when they come into my yard is especially after the colts um, hatch is the horses will always be curious in the yard here and they're very, very defensive of the young colts. And so the very first year I ever had some, um, I had this horse that just come into my yard that was pretty much a hot blood. And she would get really curious with these cranes and she'd go up to them and every time she'd get close to them, they'd both start dancing on their legs and they'd spread their wings, you know, the six feet or whatever the wingspan is. And, and they start pecking and, you know, jumping right at this horse. And so the horse is coming up, the horse is coming up and all of a sudden, you know, that crane just is like, bump, and that horse would just go, tuck its tail and just, you know, run back a hundred feet and then started looking again, thinking about it, and I watched this four or five times and I, I swear it could have been on Homer's Funniest Videos watching this poor horse. And I... Public buildings are another place to find crane art, like South Peninsula Hospital facilities, City Hall and the Kenai Peninsula College. Oh, well, they're magnificent creatures and uh, these cranes and I have been living together for quite a long time. I'm not sure if it's the same pair, but I'm pretty sure. But uh, those cranes and I have been living here 20 years and um, Yep. There was one year they didn't have um, a chick and they adopted me. They, uh, they would come by the window. In the morning I'd get up and start coffee and he'd come by and he'd squawk at me. And finally it took me a little while. I finally realized he was doing this every morning. I assume it was he. And then I'd come out to go to work and they would just hang out with me. And I'd be out working on fence and I'd turn around and there they were. One would be standing up, one would be laying down. I said, okay, I'm going back to the cabin now. And they got up, they'd get up and walk with me back to the cabin. So they just kind of, I felt like an adopted baby crane chick that year. And then uh, that was the first year they um, didn't have any colts at all that I'm aware of. And then uh, most years they have two, they're pretty successful. When danger's present, you know, they'll they'll come to the cabin and kind of give me notice and I run out and keep an eye on them. And they'll hang with the horse quite a bit, you know, with the subdivision going in and, um, and dogs are becoming, uh, coming through here on a re much more regular basis. Hmm. And they'll, they'll harass the cranes. And when the colts are little, they're really vulnerable. The cranes will nest on the island and they go out there at night. And so that keeps them pretty safe from coyotes. But cranes, they're just pretty fantastic creature and I love living with them. Do you have a... Ptarmigan Arts Co-op Gallery has a wide variety of gorgeous Sandhill crane art.
Now they're uh, 14 days old now. And uh, they're up and they're running like crazy. It's, uh, it's just a miraculous thing to see how fast something that small can get that big in that lake of time. We'd like to have chickens that would grow that fast. I can't think of any other bird that has survived and lived as long as the sandhill cranes. I don't know of a one. And to me, that's something. And I, I've, my granddad always told me, he says, uh, if you're going to help something, somebody, help the, help the little guy. In order to uh, make sandhill cranes except you, as you got to do the same thing all the time. You can't jump around doing it because they don't, they associate you with this. Otherwise, they think they're, you're just a stranger and uh, they don't like strangers. Uh, I don't know why, but uh, they just don't. They can't trust them. Me, I, they trust me after a period of time. Sandhill cranes have been part of many cultures for thousands of years, symbolic of the best in us, love, fidelity, duty, and devotion. From symbolism comes inspiration to nurture community, environment, and protections to ensure these magnificent birds will endure. From the Sacramento Valley Wintering Grounds to the Homer Summer Nesting Grounds, these cranes just seem to get under people's skin and into their hearts. This is Catch and Crane Watch and Ed and Nina's. Please leave us a message and we'll get back to you soon. Hey Crane Watch, this is uh, Tom the Crane Watcher. I headed down to the spit today to get sliders at the Little Mermaid and I saw three separate pairs of uh, sand hills at Beluga Slough. I'm not sure if they're paired up or not, but hey, worth a check. Talk to you later.